Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the Facebook Live class. Hope everyone had a good Easter. I can say that my wife is a very good cook, and uh, we had an excellent meal and shared it with my family. So, uh, hi Steve, thanks for joining us. I just got on myself, had some little bit of glitches, but uh, thankfully Rod was able to help me uh, get on. So, if you see me looking away, I'm still getting some stuff ready. So, um, and uh, as I say, we'll be We'll be in Romans 14 tonight, um, and um, looking at uh, some stuff there. So, and uh, and I hope everybody got a good nap and is well rested and uh, everything. So, hopefully, uh, today is a good start to the uh, week. So. All right, so we're going to be looking at uh, Romans chapter 14 has to do with, uh, as some uh, versions call it, uh, matters of disputation. Uh, some use the term just opinions, and others use the term um, disputable matters, um, which is the NIV but most of your other mainline versions use the term opinions. And um, uh, we have to remember this was a fairly long, hi Jerry, uh, section that Paul writes about, uh, both uh, all of chapter 14 and most of 15 uh, deal with this. So it must have been important to Paul uh, because of the amount of time and and uh, the length of writing he spends on this. So um, let's also remember that Paul had never been to Rome uh, during this time, by Lori, and that he um, has probably gotten information from uh, people who lived there and then uh, kind of uh, watched or came back to him. Good evening, Tammy. Good evening, Mona. Um, so... Um, So he felt there were some issues that needed to be dealt with, though um, it is kind of interesting that he um, does uh, do so in a fairly general way with this. So, uh, Sometimes this passage is um, actually avoided by some teachers due to... Um, uh, what they think may be complex matters. Uh, uh, however, it may be more in trying to apply this uh, passage more so than the uh, teaching itself. So, so I'm going to read out of the New American Standard first, and then um, I'm also going to read some out of a uh, translation called the Passion Translation. Uh, to show you some differences and, and everything. So starting in verse 1. Now accept the one who is weak in faith, but not for the purpose of passing judgment on his opinions. One man has faith that he may eat all things, but he who is weak eats vegetables only. Let, him, let not him who eats regard with contempt him who does not eat. And let not him who does not eat judge him who eats, for God has accepted him. Uh, evening, Becky. Um, who are you to judge the servant of another? To his own master he stands or falls, and stand he will, for the Lord is able to make him stand. One man regards one day above another. Another regards every day alike. Let each man be fully convinced in his own mind. 
He who observes the day observes it for the Lord, and he who eats does so for the Lord. For he gives thanks to God, and he who eats not for the Lord, he does not eat and gives thanks to God. For not one of us lives for himself, and not one dies for himself. For if we live, we live for the Lord, or if we die, we die for the Lord. Therefore, whether we live or die, we are the Lord's. For to this end Christ died and lived again, that he might be Lord both of the dead and of the living. But you, why do you judge your brother? Or you again, why do you regard your brother with contempt? For we shall all stand before the judgment seat of God. I'm going to skip down to verse 13. Therefore, let us not judge one another any more, but rather determine this, not to put an obstacle or a stumbling block in a brother's way. I know and am convinced in the Lord Jesus that nothing is unclean in itself, but to him who thinks um, anything to be unclean, to him it is unclean. For if because of food your brother is hurt, you are no longer walking according to love. Do not destroy with your food him for whom Christ died. And then from the Passion Translation, it goes like this. Offer an open hand of fellowship to welcome every true believer, even though their faith may be weak and immature, and refuse to engage in debates with them concerning nothing more than opinions. For example, one believer has no problem with eating all kinds of food, but another with weaker faith will eat only vegetables. The one who eats freely shouldn't judge and look down on the one who eats only vegetables. And the vegetarian must not judge and look down on the one who eats everything. Remember, God has welcomed him and taken him in as his partner. Who do you think you are to sit in judgment of someone else's household servant? His own master is the one to evaluate whether he succeeds or fails. And God's servants will succeed for God's power supports them, and enables them to stand. In the same way, one person regards a certain day as more sacred than another, and another person regards them all alike. There is nothing wrong with having different personal convictions uh, about such matters. For the person who observes one day as, as especially sacred does it to honor the Lord, and the same is true regarding what a person eats. The one who eats everything eats to honor the Lord, because he gives thanks to God, and the one who has a special diet does it to honor the Lord, and he also gives thanks to God. No one lives to himself, and no one dies to himself. While we live, we must live for our master, and in death we must bring honor to him. So dead or alive, we belong to our master. For this very reason, the anointed one died and was brought back to life again, so that he would become the Lord God over the dead and living. Why would you judge your brothers or sisters because of their diet, despising them for what they eat or don't eat? For we will each have our turn to stand before God's judgment seat. Again, stepping down to verse 13. So, being, so stop being critical and condemning of other believers, but instead determine to never deliberately cause a brother or sister to stumble and fall because of your actions. I know and am convinced by personal revelation from the Lord Jesus that there is nothing wrong with eating any food, but to the one who considers it to be unclean, it is unacceptable. If your brother or sister is offended because you insist on eating what you want, it is no longer love that rules your conduct. Evening, Larry and Nancy. So, uh, Paul here uh, uses the term uh, weak and strong depending on how he defines people's faith here in certain things. Um, and he uses two examples uh, that we see. One has to do with the eating of meat and the other has to do with observance of, of days, certain days uh, we might call them holy days um, and such. Uh, now, these 
this meat issue, um, some people think might have been due to the fact that um, some meat was sacrificed to idols, and then if people ate it knowing what had been done to it, it would violate their conscience. Uh, that's definitely true in 1 Corinthians chapter 8. However, we really don't know uh, what the problem here is. Um, not only could it be that type of issue, it could be have it could instead deal with uh, Jewish purity food laws such as uh, kosher food. Um, it could also deal with vegetarianism, um, or another way of saying that would be asceticism, where people would uh, uh, eat very uh, plain diets and uh, trying to uh, keep very um, uh, not be very uh, luxurious about what they did. Um, so again, Paul's very general in this. Uh, he's more concerned about how people uh, in the church trust each other uh, the fact that, uh, or in how they treat each other. Um, so in verse 3, he says, The strong are not to look down at the weak, and the weak are not to judge the strong. Um, so, and then God has accepted that person. What would it mean that God has accepted that person? So, Use your comment buttons, and uh, we'll start to start our discussion. This translation used the term "God has welcomed him." by the way. So while we're waiting on that, um, in, a, in a few other places in the New Testament, Paul deals with um, sometimes uh, observance of certain days, and as I mentioned, sometimes meets. Jim Squires, uh, hello. God doesn't screen people as we might. Very true. Um, that... Uh, but in those places in Galatians and 1 Corinthians, uh, Paul seems to be a little more uh, concerned about the fact that these are affecting people's salvation. Um, where here, he uh, doesn't seem to be as concerned about that, that it's just a matter of opinion. So um, these do not seem to be issues that uh, would uh, cause us to lose our salvation. So just keep that in mind also. So uh, question, how would God accept, God, in ex God accepting a person, um, how might else, how might we define that? especially in the context of judging.
So in verse 3, um, it says the one who eats freely shouldn't judge and look down. And also the one who does not eat meat should not uh, judge the one who uh, eats everything because God has accepted him or welcomed him. Um, what does that mean that God has accepted him? Okay, Jim says, our opinions are narrower than the grace he extends to us. Lori says uh, he finds favor with them. I think Jim's comment that um, God's grace can find uh, a large, uh, you know, some things God is uh, um, willing to forgive that sometimes we aren't, so. One of the things I thought about was if we are actually judging or um, looking down at someone in a sense, we're taking the place of God and what his actions might be. Uh, Becky says, God's grace isn't based on silly things like food or holidays. Yes. Um, His grace is based on salvation and forgiveness of sins. So, um, and as he says in verse 17, um, the kingdom of God is not eating and drinking, but righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. So, What might be some things that cause some people to want to observe special days that they had? Mona says, uh, a feeling of holiness. Steve says, tradition. Um, so, um, what type of days might cause a feeling of holiness that some would want to watch or some would want to observe? Lori says, feast. Um, Eric says, in our world today, uh, Easter. Jim Squire says, a memorial of a loved one or some anniversary event in the local church, not recognized by some. Yes. Um, of course, back then, uh, you had Jews in the congregation, and they would have a tendency to want to observe their feast days. 
the Day of Atonement, uh, things like that. Uh, and then for the Gentiles, there was even pagan festivals they, may, they might want to observe. Uh, even though they had become a Christian, they still might uh, find something like that, as Steve suggested, a tradition. Um, and um, again, in uh, Paul's writing, he says, for those who recognize those days, he had no problem with that as long as uh, they didn't uh, try and bind it on somebody. Uh, and if uh, they treated every day the same, that was fine too. So what was important to Paul about the way they observed days or didn't observe days? Or uh, what does he say there in verse uh, 6? Becky says, anytime we do to something to bring glory and recognition to God should be okay with us. So... Um, when Paul says, um, if it brings honor to God or glory, uh, then that should be enough um, and stuff. So, um, okay, Becky also says, uh, Paul was concerned with their hearts. Yes, uh, hearts, attitudes, uh, minds. Uh, more so than anything. In fact, in dealing with meats, um, we have the passage where Jesus said, it's not what goes into you that makes you impure, it's what comes out of your mouth, so which comes from your heart. So that's, uh, uh, so even Jesus felt that way as well. And we have to remember here that the people who say didn't eat meat or uh, wanted to observe certain days, uh, to them this was very important. Uh, in their hearts they felt it was absolutely necessary and uh, even morally important here. So um, we need to keep that in mind for our fellow brother and sister that while we may feel we have liberty to do something or not do something, there'll be other people that um, don't want to do certain things and uh, or they want to observe special things and that can, uh, we do not want to uh, uh, affect their conscience will be the end of this so so um, in verses 7 through 12 Paul talks about the fact that we uh, all affect each other we uh, Becky says only God can judge your hearts we are to love and accept. Yes. So, uh, in 1 Corinthians 12, where it talks about the idea of each, uh, each member of the body or of the church has a role. And, uh, but it's like if you hit your little finger with a hammer, uh, the rest of your body hurts as well. So, uh, we can definitely affect each other. Uh, and But whatever we do should be for Christ and, um, and stuff. Uh, this passage that uh, Paul quotes um, comes from Isaiah. And um, Paul also uses it in Philippians 2. Um, 
but shows kind of the sovereignty of God here that we should accept, you know, what God has given us. If we were wanting to truly be in agreement with each other, God would have cloned us or made us robots. But instead, we're all completely different from each other, and uh, we will all have different opinions and different uh, ideas and ways of and different processes of of how we think about things. So, uh, verse eight, where it says, um, excuse me. For if we live, we live for the Lord. If we die, we die for the Lord. Therefore, whether we live or die, we are the Lord's. So I, th I thought that would be actually a great epitaph on, on a tombstone uh, for somebody that's lived a, uh, uh, a life for God. So... Eric, um, these are people weak in the faith. Our goal needs to be strengthening them not to destroy what little faith they have. True. Uh, we also have to remember that uh, this may have been their weakness was in this one part, uh, not necessarily in uh, that part of... Um, uh, their faith that of what they believed in Jesus and the resurrection and the the things necessary for salvation, though. Uh, it was more these things. Um, and then uh, verses 10 through 12 will stand before the judgment seat of God and give an account um, what do you think uh, we'll be held accountable for when we're there? And again, this is pertaining to Christians, not just the just unbelievers. It will also be Christians here. Um, what what would we, we be held accountable for? Becky, uh, everything we've said and done, um, particularly our words are, are it's said, uh, every careless word will have to be accountable for. Um, how we use the uh, talents God has given us, how we've used the finances, um, and also our time is important. Uh, Jim says the choices we made. Yes. Uh, this idea of, of this judgment seat is not so much a legal uh, in, in a court trial bench. It's more the kind that uh, was at an uh, athletic event and where the referee sat or the um, judge for that type of event and uh, so it's a little different. Uh, again, it also where Paul talks about um, having to beat his body to um, so that he could run the race and uh, those type of things where um, uh, we don't want to stumble as we as we run those races. So in verse 13, uh, which is where we get our one another passage for tonight, um, not to judge one another, but um, the um, the word the phrases there make up your mind and determine our attitudes we must have uh, to avoid judging each other, um, and. Um, 
these are actually apparently in the Greek have to do with avoiding judging each other, uh, but to judge ourselves more so. Um, so to think about the meat and not eating it, what was the stumbling block that could occur uh, there that Paul talks about? Mona says, the NIV says not to put any sty. any stumbling block or obstacle in your brother's way. Uh, so what would that stumble, what would that be? Um, or what would, what would the action be if, if we did that? Um, you know, a stumbling block causes people to fall. Um, and, uh, possibly not be able to get back up. So Paul is saying don't put or don't do something to so you don't put that there. Uh, what would that be? Things we want done our way. And in this case with the meat, it was I'm going to eat meat no matter where, no matter what, even if it say was something, let's, let's just say it was the person that was weak in the faith was a vegetarian, for an example. Um, so if somebody ate meat and it hurt him, it violated his conscience because he then felt like he had to eat meat, um, that would be a stumbling block. Um, so, or it would be like putting, let's say, non-kosher food for a Jew on their plate and thinking they would eat it, and they might feel they had to, depending on who, depending on who was around them at the time. So, so there's different things and, um, and everything. So the key is here is, as Mona says, it oftentimes is what we want done our way. Uh, and, you know, it's interesting in verse 14, Paul says, this is reading from the uh, Passion Translation. I know it and am convinced by personal revelation. Now, this is Paul speaking, that there is nothing wrong with eating any food. If you remember, Peter was told that. Um, to when the sh in his vision he was told when the sheet was let down to kill and eat and that all food was acceptable um, so in the sense the people who eat meat in this chapter 14 passage are right they're, uh, they're on the correct side if you will um and and their faith is their faith is strong but uh but because they have brethren among them that do not want to eat that meat and if they do it will cause them to violate their conscience um then that's the problem. And Eric just said, trying to enforce something that goes against another's conscience, even if it's okay to do so. So 
you know, in a matter of opinion, not, you know, if it's something sinful that the person is doing, uh, that person needs to be uh, brought back away from that sin and, uh, and stuff. But when it's just something that God's word may not really speak to or, or something that's really something that uh, has come up, for some reason, um, you know, the the idea of enforcing it, uh, but if it violates somebody else's conscience, is really wrong. Paul says it's not loving to do that. Uh, and so, uh, and in fact, he says he would avoid doing it. Um, that's the uh, end of chapter 14, actually. Uh, that, uh, well, it talks about in the chapter 14 that those who uh, do so violate their conscience. But the fact that you um, aren't loving is the problem if you do this. So Paul wants them to... Um, Not, he would rather not eat meat. And he also says that in 1 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 4. So here's a scenario that imagine the early Roman church in the midst of an issue like this. Uh, what are some things you think the groups might be saying about each other? the ones who are strong and the ones who are weak. Um, what might they be saying regarding, you know, eating of meat or not eating of meat and observing holy days or, or, not, or not observing? So in his example, um, one might say, she doesn't care about scripture. Uh, he's just an old school conservative. And then the other group might be saying, she's a crazy liberal. If he'd only see it my way, he'd finally get it. Why doesn't she just play it safe, so to speak, Better safe than sorry. <laughs> Jim says those liberals are taking over. Um, and Becky says you should or should not. Yes, that's not our job. So, um, so again, we have to be aware that it's easy, though, for us to go there and... Um, and stuff, even, even if we don't, uh, it's real easy. And then you get into the gossip, uh, sometimes arena, which is really not a good thing. So, so, um, so this is kind of in the realm of, uh, of uh, this judging, but why is judging people's motives a risky business? So while we're waiting on that, um, I, I have a couple commentaries on Romans um, that I used for this lesson. Uh, yeah, Jim says, lack of understanding the context. Becky, you don't know their motives. That's very true. Um, and Eric says, we cannot know a person's heart. Yes. Uh, in fact, uh, an example given after that is... Uh, 
Uh, why do you think the vegetarians didn't want to eat meat? Was it because they were dull and stupid? Which some people might actually think, but, or was it really because they wanted to honor God? Um, you, know, you think about Daniel. He didn't want to eat the king's food in, in Daniel 1 um, because he felt it was not the best thing and uh, God blessed him for that. Um, so uh, Becky says, we judge others by their actions, but we judge ourselves by our motives. Yes, and because um, that's what we see. That's, and unfortunately, though, uh, we don't, we need to understand their motives, though, to truly understand the person. So, so the strong in faith here, such as the ones who were meat eaters, um, or the ones that observed the holy days, uh, should they press their case? on the others should they say paul said we were right and so you should do what we are doing so anyway while y'all are thinking about that um so i use a couple of uh uh, commentaries, one's by a guy named Jim McGuigan, who uh, was a teacher at Sunset School and also was a missionary to Ireland. And in fact, he himself was Irish. Uh, and then I also use one by a guy named James Boyce, B-O-I-C-E. Uh, I happened to be at Oklahoma Christian one time, and I love to go to, to bookstores, and uh, they had... Uh, uh, a uh, Romans commentary by him and I found it mostly helpful he is not uh, with the churches of Christ but that even makes it more interesting in a way because it gives a different point of view so the question is should the strong of faith in this passage, the meat eaters, let's say, should they press their case on the people that are weak in faith and tell them they, they should eat meat? Because verse 14, Paul, Paul says, the meat eaters are right. Another way of wording this is okay, Jim says not in disputable matters. Um, and the reason is because it would violate their conscience. Uh, Paul says, in fact, that he would basically not do something to violate somebody's conscience forever so that they wouldn't sin because we have to remember every person in god's church or in his kingdom that uh, has um, should be held just like a child of god like we are Okay, Lori says not eating the meat is not wrong, but pushing it in others could be. Yeah, the question is, though, is if you pushed eating the meat on others. Because that's what Paul says is actually 
um, the Christian, where uh, uh, Christians have the liberty to do so here. Um, the people not eating the meat were being restrictive uh, because they felt it was actually wrong to do so. Now let's uh, take, for example, Paul uh, in the circumcision of Gentiles. Uh, Paul certainly thought that was absolutely wrong uh, because that did affect people's salvation and imposed a legalism on the Gentiles. Uh, what Peter says in Acts 15 as a burden that the Gentiles should not bear. Um, so that was not a disputable matter to Paul. That was something that uh, needed to be looked at and a judgment made on whether it was right or wrong. Eric says, God will judge in these matters. If we press the issue on meat, we're making a judgment we shouldn't make. Yes, and that's oftentimes um, the way this section sometimes is worded in Romans is agreeing to disagree. And that's what basically this comes down to, that there are matters that one side comes down on, the other side comes down on differently. And the biggest thing is the side should agree that uh, both, both can have their way. Um, now, Sometimes an issue can be so, um, can be very strong, but we have to try and be loving and, and we have to try and really uh, look into this to see if uh, what teaching there is and whether we can apply the, uh, the word to these things. Eric says, mask or no mask. Um, yeah, I mean, to me, and I thought about this, uh, there is, uh, of course, nothing in Scripture regarding this. I don't think it's a uh, matter of salvation, so it definitely falls into the opinion realm. Uh, there is some things regarding whether or not... Uh, you know, science, following the law, those type of things we, we uh, had dealt with. But currently, it's, it's completely a matter of opinion. And uh, so neither side should judge the other as to what they're doing about this. So, um, and we should just be accepting of each other. So, um, that's the, um, that's the, uh, lesson I had. I hope it's helpful. Um, Eric will be, bring, will be bringing a, a lesson in two weeks. Um, and, um, still in the one another series. And then, uh, uh, we're going to see from there if we will continue uh, this, uh, a different series or not. Um, so let's uh, close in a word of prayer and, uh, and go from there. Holy Father, uh, just come before you. And uh, Father, we know that uh, sometimes there are issues in, in the church that um, have divided churches and have uh, cause great anguish and and father we just ask that um, uh, for those type of things that it's our hearts that are touched that we ask your spirit to move us um, in the past it seems like the worst has come out 
in people rather than the best and uh, uh, does not set a good example for the church. And we just pray that uh, uh, when we look at things that uh, uh, if we decide it as a matter of opinion that uh, again we'll be loving, that we can agree to disagree. Um, and uh, Father, we'll always look to you as our, as our Lord, that we know you'll be the one uh, judging us. That, and uh, we just ask that we, we, we need to be responsible for our hearts and for our actions and, uh, that, you, uh, and that you will keep us um, in your grace and that uh, uh, we will always do what we need to do. Uh, Father, just uh, uh, be with us. We pray that uh, uh, we'll look to your son for our example. Uh, we pray that your spirit will uh, help guide us and, and move us to uh, uh, do what is right and, uh, and what is glorifying to you and honor, honoring to you. And we just pray these things in your name. Amen. All right. Thanks, Jim. Thanks, everybody. We're all done.